Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I'm your host today, Silent Senior Zero Nine, and this is Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. <coughs> Last time we left off, we did absolutely nothing in terms of progress, but we did spend about 30 minutes with a little help with movie magic, of course, uh, going through and solving some puzzle sliding puzzles. We got a lot of rupees for it, as you can see by our increased rupee count. Which, it made it not totally a waste of time, but for the most part, it does nothing in terms of story progress or side quests. But I needed to cover it anyway. And speaking of covering yet more stuff that isn't really going to progress uh, story-wise, today we're going to be taking on the Tingle Tuner stuff. Now, while I could just do this all and be like, oh yeah, you guys can take my word for it, all you need to do is connect this to that, I think it would probably be better if I go ahead and show you. And what better way to do that than to actually have you guys with me right here in the recording area. Woo! Yay! All right. So you'll have to pardon the shakiness and pardon the camera if it decides to, like, zoom in and out. Or um, auto-adjust the lens a little bit, you know, the visions and whatnot. I'm going to try and hold it steady as best as I can, but I'm going to be kind of showcasing what you got to do. Let me move this mic out of the way for a second. Um, there we go. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over first the... <clears throat> Excuse me. The equipment we need to uh, do this, actually. And this is stuff that is for the GameCube version of Wind Waker. All right. So with me right here, I'll show you on the bed here. We have some stuff laying around. That's just a charger over there. This is just a little cheat sheet for me in case I need to refer to it. You can take a look at it if you want. Ooh. Messy handwriting, messy handwriting, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Yep. All that good stuff. So for this, you're going to need the... Link cable for the GameCube for Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance SPs. You need a Game Boy Advance SP or a Game Boy Advance. Um, I don't have a Game Boy Advance. I just I skipped ahead and just got this. It's really beat up, as you can see. I've had this thing for years. That's mostly from just sliding in and out of, out of my jean pockets when I first got it. And then, of course, right here I have the Nintendo GameCube, which I'm not using to record with. I'm actually using the Wii. I'll go ahead and show you. Sorry, I'm waving my hand in front of your face there. Let me zoom you in. Yeah, there it is right there. I will be using that, of course, to do this. And, of course, as you can see on screen, there you go. I was just there chilling out on the beach there, or the cabana. Anywho, so we're going to zoom back out here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you step-by-step step how you're supposed to do this, okay? First off, step one. You need this to be plugged into a Player 2 slot, or Player 3 or 4. Um, you can't put this in Player 1 because you need the GameCube controller to be plugged into Player 1. For this case, I won't have Player 1 plugged in. So you need this plugged into one of those slots. I'm just kind of showing you on the GameCube here. So you take this, plug it in. because It plugs in like a controller, the cable cord does. That's one end. Then you got this end right here, okay? And this end has this little plug here. Excuse me, my thumb there. This plug here is going to go into one of these little slots here. I believe it's actually the, um, I believe it's this one right here, the one with my big fat finger on. Um, the other one is for the charger, which is why I guess I brought the charger actually right here. This is the Game Boy Advance SP charger. It also works for Ninten the old Nintendo DSs, and that was that's how it would plug in. And of course, this would just uh, maybe just unfold it. That would plug into the wall and you would charge it. It was kind of a big deal at the time because it's like we now officially have a way to recharge our handheld systems. That was like a big groundbreaker for uh, Nintendo at the time. But yeah, this one looks like it goes to... Let me see if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> this looks like it goes to the plug right here. Let me go and just plug that in right now. I'm actually having a hard time holding this up and whatnot. Um, looks like I'm going to have to make do by just plugging it and then kind of showing you guys... All right, GameCube, hold that for me, would you? Thanks. Okay. So yeah, that would be the charger cord. But I, the reason I show that is because I know it, it kind of bothers me when it's like, okay, well, how do I know which is which? You know, there you go. It's the big, the bigger ones for the charger. The the little, the smaller outlet is for the Game Boy Advance. And um, you'll have to make sure that you have this fully charged already. As far as I know, it should be full of battery life because I charged it before I started this recording. Um, because this here, this device, this occupies the entire like area when you plug this in, and as you can see, it has like little hooks, uh, little hooks to latch onto. I keep forgetting to 
zoom in and show you guys. So let's see if we can't maybe finagle this without having the. There you go. Let me try to hold you steady here so I don't drop you. In. Uh, okay, there you go. So that's step two: is you plug in the other end of the game, the uh, cable cord for the GameCube and Game Boy Advance uh, uh, device. There you go. <laughs> I'll find the word sometime this century. Um, once you've done that, the next thing you have to do is you have to turn on the Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance SP before you start. Okay. Obviously, it won't do anything here because you know, um, or nothing will happen once I do this. I mean, I'll turn it on just to show you guys that it does work. I hope it works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you want to make sure you have no game inside this thing, okay? And uh, once you've done all that, you, need, you can move on to step four. And to do step four, got to pass the uh, camera, if you will, onto the game footage. So let's move back to the game footage, shall we? Yeah! And the last and final step, in order to get this to work, you have your Game Boy Advance already turned on and it's hooked up correctly with the cable cord and everything I've showed you. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and pull out the tingle tuner the item itself, then you're going to use it. And hopefully, with any luck, okay. It should say this. If it doesn't say this and it says something like, hey, you need to plug in the Game Boy Advance into player 2, 3, or 4, blah, 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 it'll give you like a wall of text. Um, that means it's not something's not hooked up correctly or your Game Boy Advance isn't turned on. Since it didn't, or since everything is working, it should prompt us to do this. We're going to go ahead and tell it to call Tingle, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like on my end of the stick here. Alrighty. Alrighty, and upon calling Tingle, what'll happen is Tingle's gonna be sent directly to us on our Game Boy Advance. And usually what he'll do is he'll greet us. If I can get this to actually like show us, that'd be nice. Come on, camera, please. You gonna be nice to me today? Or are you gonna be difficult? Okay, well that's as good as it's gonna have to get probably, yeah. This is what it looks like on my end of the stick on the Game Boy Advance SP. Usually what'll happen is Tingle will be like, Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Fairy, and all that good stuff. And so, you'll notice there are a few things on here. Let me see if I can do this without breaking anything. Um, you'll notice that there's a B button that has 10 rupee, 10 next to it with a bomb. Um, if we push that button right there, push the B button, that'll actually use a bomb on screen. And specifically, um, it'll use it right where t Link is standing. You'll see like a little green um, a tingle emblem underneath link and we can actually move that so if we use the control pad here to move that um, this will cause that to actually move around on the game itself and to kind of track it oh of course he's gonna tell if he have if we happen to be hovering over something he's gonna tingles gonna chime in and say hey this is something um, he says that there are there are some floating barrels around this area if you see any get them Sorry, I had a ch hard time reading that because it's like really small font. And I apologize that my camera is being difficult, but I wanted to try and at least show you guys like what it looks like on my end of the stick as far as like what the Game Boy Advance is. Because I really do not have a way to like show you guys a nice high quality um, picture of what it looks like on this end of the stick. So, yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, the Tingle Tuner on my end of the stick, as I said before, if I push B, actually, actually, we push A to go ahead and tell, tell Tingle, like, okay, yeah, I got it. It's like a, it's kind of like an email notification box, you know, you have to tell it, like, okay, yeah, I got the message, go ahead and close that box, you know. Now, if I push B, depending on wherever um, Tingle's marker thing's at, that'll drop a bomb, actually. So, if I go ahead and, um, let me see here. Okay, sorry about that, I was actually fiddling around with some stuff. So let's say, like, let's go ahead and show you the screen real quick. Let's say you move this, move his little Tingle emblem around, and you're like, okay, where's it at? And you can take a look on screen, and right now Tingle's like, ooh, there's something here. And you don't know, if you want to know how to, like, return the emblem back to where Link is, all you have to do is push R, and then I'll send you right back to home, and as you can see, the emblem's right there. So again, if I move around and whatnot, and I'm like, okay, where did I put it? All I have to do is push R, and it'll return right underneath Link. Um, additionally, if you push B, which is currently equipped with bombs, as I showed showed you before, um, there is a, if I can get it to focus, that'd be nice. Well, those are bombs right there on the B button right there. And the 10 indicates how many rupees you have to spend in order to use it. And uh, upon doing that, if I go ahead and show you over here what's going to happen, we push B, 
that thing's going to blow, and I better go ahead and move Link, or that's going to hurt a lot. So yeah, that was kind of something kind of fun, actually, that uh, was introduced with the, the Game Boy Advance Link Cable era, when, you know, not everything was wireless, as it is nowadays. Um, this was something that could be used as a means of sort of playing two-player on Legend of Zelda, um, if you weren't playing, like, a Legend of Zelda The Four Swords, a Link's Advent, or not Link's Adventure, but a Legend of Zelda The Four Swords Adventure, I guess. Um, yeah, it was kind of a cool little feature. So, we actually do have a couple of side quests we got to show, and I'm going to go ahead and pass the vision off to the gameplay footage, so let's go ahead and do that, and I'll continue my explanation of the side quests we have to do with Tingle, or the Tingle Tuner stuff. Okie dokie, Artichoke. So, as you can see right now, we have on screen Tingle's little emblem. You may hear a little squeak, squeak, squeak. That's the Game Boy Advance in the background, actually. Um... Periodically, you'll probably hear some weird noises as that's going on. But yeah, now we have Tingle's help if we want to drop bombs, we can. If we happen to be exploring an area we don't know much about and we move the um, Tingle tuner around, we can actually kind of take a peek around areas and just kind of look, take a look. We actually also push... Hey, I forgot to mention this. Um, there, was an, it, there was an action called Call. If we push that, he's like, Hey! You know, that's kind of his way to point you in the direction... Um, you happen to be looking at on the map. So you could technically mess around with, if you're like player two and you're controlling Tingle, you could mess with your uh, player one actually continue pushing that button, as well as running around dropping bombs randomly. Um, do, again, be mindful that this does cost 10 rupees, so if you don't have enough rupees, he will not be able to use them. I think there are also other items you can use. Um, I haven't quite experimented much with that. I think maybe if I go to my, if I push start or select, Okay, it's start. Yeah, if I push start, I could probably do some stuff here. We got a Tingle Bomb. Actually, you know what? I should probably show this. Hang on. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's about as focused as I can get it. Sorry about that. So, as I was saying, if I push start... Well, after I read the message, of course, because he was like, Hey, it's morning again. If you push start, you actually have like a little item menu here. There's my big fat finger. Mind it. <laughs> and he offers some items. Right now, we have the default item, which is the Tingle Bomb, which... W um, it says, Tingle will explode one of his bombs for you with a POW for 10 rupees. Um, to the left is a single pin. We can use these to mark our C charts. It also points us into our next destination, which I'm guessing means um, probably story related, possibly. Uh, or may actually be just like an island marker. He says he drew this, drew his first map with at the age of three. I guess he's trying to do a little humble brag there. Um, we got a Tingle Balloon here. It says, Tingle Balloon, your body will float on air. Move about in the air for five seconds. So we can float, we can levitate in this game. I may have to play around with that, I don't know. Um, we can levitate in this game for five seconds. I don't know if I could be able to use much of that, though, to be honest. Uh, we have the Tingle Shield. It says, look out, sir! Enemies attack! A lovely spirit shield will... Surround us for 10 seconds. It's kind of like our magic armor, basically, except it uses 40 rupees for 10 seconds. Uh, we have the Kulu Limpa. It's 40 rupees. He says, not even I know what may occur, sir. This is a test of your courage. Okay, so basically it's a, an item that, or it's a thing that we could use possibly that could be helpful, or it could be really kind of scary. I may have to test that out just for the heck of it, for the funsies. On the bottom left here, we have the Tinga Watch. She says he can tell us what time it is right now, um, based on the game time, I'm sure. The blue book, the blue guidebook, is the basically the dummy's guide for the Tingle Tuner. It'll tell us the instructions. Stop zooming, fading out, camera, would you please? Dude! Thank you. All right. Next to the blue book, we got the red ting. This uh, energizes us. When we're feeling tired, it also refills hearts regularly. Pay 20 rupees for that. Uh, we have the Green Ting Replenish, which, as you might imagine, it, instead of, like, the red potion, it does what the green potion would do. It restores our magic meter. <laughs> Cannot survive without this, Mr. Furry. Sorry, I was just reading some of the text. And, of course, the Blue Ting, one sip, will cure us of our magic meter and our heart strength, actually. I think. Let me see. One sip and you have it all. You greedy little fairy, you. Strength and magic. Okay. And of course, as you might imagine, that's a little more expensive. It's 80 rupees. So that's the item menu. I apologize for that. I was like, ugh. What am I going to explain again? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much everything I could think of I would need to explain on here. Let me see. Is there, does select do anything? 
Oh wow, it does actually. It tells us exactly what every button does. How about that? Okay, cool. There's your button select. <laughs> if I can get it to fade, not like fade out like it's doing, uh, well, while it's figuring that out. L is to view the C chart. R is to warp cursor back to link, as I demonstrated earlier. A is to check the cursor position. B is to use an item at the cursor position. Um, start is to open up the item menu, and then of course select, I can just exit this. So let's go ahead and do that. Move my fat finger in here, and uh, all right, go back. All right, now that we've officially kind of explained everything that we can explain with the Tingle Tuner on my end of the stick, let's go ahead and pass the mic back over to the gameplay footage, and we're going to go ahead and get started with these Tingle Tuner side quests. Alrighty then, now it's side quest time. Woo! Yay! Hold on, let me get five more woos up there. That was not nearly exciting. Woo! 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 In a woo! Okay, now we have enough Ric Flares on screen. All the Ric Flares! All the Ric Flares! I'd add some more Ric Flares just for the funsies, but yeah. I don't want to give future self too much work, because this is already going to be high maintenance as is. So, as I said before, probably a gajillion times over, we have some side quests we got to do. One of them is on Outset Island. I actually prefer to be morning, so let's fix that right now. Alright, now that it's morning, let's go ahead and get ourselves over to Outset Island, because there's something we can do here, or do there with the Tangle Tuner Tuner on. Hopefully this actually works, because last time I tried to do this, it, um, it didn't even function or respond. But, maybe today's different. Maybe I, maybe because I passed the tutorial stuff and played around a little bit with Tangle, it'll actually work. That might have been what the issue was. Heck if I know, really. Cause, I mean, it's not like you can look up and find a guide for this. That's a good visual aid of like, okay, this is... I mean, mine's not really going to be that much of a visual aid, but anyway. So here we are on Outset Island with the Tingle Tuner on and activated and ready to rock and roll. If we make our way over to the island... I don't know why the camera pointed out. That was weird. <laughs> Once we reach the island, something should happen, and then I'm going to have to turn the camera back on and get my, get my uh, perspective change for y'all so that way you can enjoy this. So let's go ahead and get on to the shores of the Outset Island, and here we go. Okie dokie artichokey. So I managed to get this to trigger, actually. Um, if this does not happen immediately, you may have to walk around on Outset Island a little bit. And once you do, this should happen, actually. Someone else should pop up on screen. There you are. Knuckle! It's Knuckle! I was so worried about you! Don't play dumb. Why'd you doodle on Tingle Tower? I built that thing. What? What? For Tingle only, sign I wrote? Sorry, please forgive me. And I apologize that this is, like, fading out. This is really obnoxious and very unprofessional, but we're going to make do, I suppose. <clears throat> well, I might consider it if the fairy will do as I ask. And apparently we're now the fairy. Mr. Fairy, can you get to that outdoor bath? Just don't open any doors before you finish doing what I tell you. You'll fail if you do. Sorry for shaking the camera, by the way. Mr. Fairy, please help me. Please do what my brother asks or says. All right, so now we have a quest to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and pass the vision back to the gameplay footage. Oh, Kidoki Artichoki. So Knuckle has appeared on our Tingle Tuner, and he is giving us a little... Not so much a fetch quest, but just a little wild goose chase. We gotta go to places on the map he wants us to go to, so... First up, he said to go to the bathhouse. That's actually right up here, next to Grandma's house. And all we have to do is just step on inside the water, and he should pop up on our screen again. And now I gotta pass the camera back over to the Game Boy Advance. Excuse me while I do that. Alright, so here's the knuckle update. Hmm. Now, let's test you further. Next, go down the ladder that no one uses. Okay, I reckon we can do that. So the ladder that nobody uses. Alrighty, that's not too much of a problem. That is actually going to be right over by where All Rails Lookout is. I'm going to go ahead and beeline it over there. I mean, I could swim, technically, but he said for us to go down it, so let's go ahead and just make our way to the top, and then we'll go ahead and work our way down. Because, you know, it, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. You just knew I was setting up for that. Oh, my gosh. Most obvious references. Obvious. My goodness, man. Feels weird having a thing follow me, man. 
almost feels like I'm under radar, some kind of, like, missile launcher. Alright, so now we're down the ladder that uh, nobody uses. Let's see what the next update is. Shoot, nice work. Next, can you climb onto the biggest rock at the top of the hill? Hmm, biggest rock, he says. I reckon we could find something like that on Outside Island. So, back up the ladder that nobody uses goes. It's funny how they actually have that as a description. Because I know somebody out there is thinking, like, who the heck uses this thing? Like, that freaking, like, ladder over there? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I, I guess I'm just weird like that, because I think about stuff that sometimes people are like, why would you think about something so minuscule or meaningless, if you will? Because my mind is just like that. I, I can't really explain it to people, to be honest. It's like why you, it's like trying to explain why you like something, I suppose. Like why are you a fan of Pokemon or a fan of One Piece or a fan of Kingdom Hearts or whether you're a fan of some particular pop star artist or something, you know? You just don't really explain it, you just do. Alright, so let's get on up here. I think I actually just did it. Actually no I didn't, my bad. What's he giving me that for? Well I appreciate the update. Yes, he oh he's just telling me the to use the deck leaf to get across the bridge there. But this is the biggest rock, I believe, that he's talking about. Alright, so here we are. Once again, another update, and I gotta make this quick because I'm about out of power on my Game Boy Advance, so I'm gonna pass you off to the last update he's got. Here we go. Okay, congrats. You're pretty good, I must say. Next. Try to jump down below the suspension bridge. Let me actually put you in there. Do you have what it takes? Do you have the courage? Do you have that much courage? I dare you to try it. I know he didn't say that, but I figured I'd build up the su suspense while I fix the camera here. Alright, so, hopefully this is the last time we have to... Well, actually, no, there's one other time. But anyway, let's go ahead and go back to the gameplay footage, and then uh, we're going to about finish up this little quest. Splish! Enough! I've lost the contest on the island that I hit on. What can I do? Oh, I'll give you the hand-me-down tuner. Okay, so we got apparently an updated tingle tuner, which is called the hand-me-down. That doesn't sound any better, to be honest. Ugh, fine. I'm going back home. Mr. Fairy, you're great! You're like family, you know? When you come to Tingle Island, I'll call you Silent Est instead of Mr. Fairy. Okay, so very, 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 very minuscule detail. Um, whenever we're on Tingle Island instead of Mr. Fairy, although when we're talking to Tingle himself, he's going to continue calling us Mr. Fairy in the game. On the Tingle Tuner, he's going to call us Silent S, or whatever file name we happen to put up. So you can have some real fun with that, having Tingle say some rather uh, suggestive or otherwise questionable bits and phrases if you name your file something uh well questionable <laughs> so that was the tingle tuner one of the side quests we had to do with this um we're gonna go ahead and head back to tingle island and see if uh, this guy named knuckle happens to be there and then i'll probably call it a video there and then next time we meet we're gonna go ahead and take care of one other little project so let's go meet each other back on tingle island shall we so here we are on tingle island and as i said before there should be a guy named Knuckle here, and it looks like there's a guy standing in a little patch of grass here. Ah! He must be Knuckle. How are you, good sir? Hey, Mr. Fairy! I have decided that in the end, this one is the most beautiful of all. What is the island? Beauty does not come from what you see. It comes from what is inside you. Very, very wise words indeed. Of course, some pessimists would probably say only ugly people say something like that, but... <laughs> I have to say that I, I kind of agree with that statement, because there's some pretty awesome people out there, and although maybe outwardly they may not have the best in, best of looks, and that's mostly because not everybody is really fashionably inclined, or not inclined, um, fashionably in touch, I can say I'm one of those people, I'm not really like the cleanest or the most debonair type of person, if you will, snagging a line from Gumbrio, if you don't mind. Now if we try talking to Tingle up here, the Tingle Tuner would be like, okay, well... 
you're talking to me in person. I'm going to be, like, disappearing now. Oh, I guess he does talk to me. Okay. And say my name. Yeah, Solanus! I must say, I've been wanting to see you very badly. What should we play today? Um, how about we play Let's End the Video? What? That's boring. I don't want to play that. Well, goodbye, Mr. Fairy. Please come visit me here at Tangle Tower again, where wonderful ma fairy magic makes the place spin and spin. Or your slave driving bro uh, little brother's here. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, that's just the team will you're freaking out, like, hey, if you're gonna be in person, you might as well just talk to me there, instead of refer to me on, on the Game Boy Advance. Alright, so that was the Tingle Tuner side quest video. We managed to basically make Knuckle up here, as well as um, explain a few mechanics of the Tingle Tuner. Next time we meet, we're going to actually finish doing Tingle Tuner side quest stuff. May have to actually take a break in between, because... Um, my Game Boy Advance is actually almost out of power for some reason. It's, um, it's better life. It's not really that great. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and finish that up in the next video, so. Thank you so much for watching. Love you a bunch. It's only Show Swap, and I will see you all next time. Peace!